It takes you hours and sometimes days to finish a project. It seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But after days of struggling, you're ready to export your video and then... Yeah, unfortunately, I know exactly what you're going through. So today I'll show you how to edit extremely efficient and make sure your project doesn't crash. Number 1. Using the incorrect effects. In the effects library, you can find all types of effects that you can apply in your clip. Now, some of them have this little icon next to them. This means they are GPU accelerated. GPU acceleration means that Premiere will use the power of your graphics card to process the effects. This will, of course, make it run a lot faster. Now, some effects like the corner pin, for example, is not GPU accelerated. And if you drag it on your clip, you can already see this red line appear. This means your CPU has to do all the work. Or in other words, the effect will be completely unusable, no matter how great your PC is. But wait, I'll show you a fix for that. For the slow effects like corner pin, I recommend using a dynamic link composition with After Effects. To do that, right click your clips and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. That will turn your clip into an After Effects comp. Now Adobe After Effects will open up and you can use any effect without having to worry about Premiere crashing. Now the dynamic link is awesome, but you guys might already know that the playback isn't really wow, but that can be fixed in a few seconds though. To do that, right click your dynamic linked comp and choose render and replace. Then click on OK. When it's done, you just turn your clip into a normal clip, which will even play back on your potato PC. But now, what if you want to edit the rendered clip again? Then simply right click the clip and choose restore unrendered. And there's your linked composition again. Now to open it again in After Effects, right click it and find edit original. There you go. By the way, to prevent using non-GPU accelerated effects, click the little GPU acceleration icon. Premiere will then only show effects that your GPU is using, so at least that's something. The next trick is gonna blow your mind. I've been using this beautiful Premiere Pro wireless keyboard from Editor's Keys for over four months now, and I gotta say, I can edit so much faster now. That's because these shortcuts are literally burned into my fingers. I've been editing videos for a very long time, but in the past four months, I got a lot faster thanks to this. This specific keyboard has an adjustable backlight which helps reduce eye strain. Editor's Keys actually worked with optical express to tweak this backlight for optimal editing sessions. And this one's funny, but when people enter my office, they always ask where I got this from. Editor's Keys is also sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. Did you know that you can use this keyboard for three months on a single charge? And it will only take you three hours to charge it. Plus, you can use it while it's charging. You can connect it to your Windows PC, MacBook, or even your iPhone if you'd like. Of course, these keyboards don't only exist for Premiere. They also have versions for After Effects, Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, FL Studio, and so much more. They even have keyboard covers for your MacBook or iPad keyboard, which is extremely simple to apply. This will genuinely help you grow as a video editor, and I don't want you guys to miss out on it. You know, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description down below. Now, have you ever wondered why a normal video in Premiere has trouble playing back? For example, my screen recording videos. Premiere just can't play it back without stuttering. Now, some video codecs are hard to read for Premiere, but there's something you can do about it. To fix this slow playback, we're gonna make a proxy that will make it easy to read for Premiere. To do that, right-click the clip in the project window and choose proxy. Then create proxies. For the format, choose QuickTime and then choose one of the ProRes presets. Click on OK and wait until Media Encoder is done. Now in the Program Monitor, click the Proxy toggle to enable the proxies you've just created. And there you got smooth playback, even on heavy codecs. Alright, this trick still blows my mind, that is making project templates. This has never been easier before. Let's say you have a project with your folders, sequences and everything. Well, you can actually save this as a template so that when you create a new project, this template will load up. To do that, go to File and then Save as Template. Call it however you like and click on Save. Next, go to new project and once you've given it a name you can choose one of your saved project templates from the drop down menu. And guess what? Your saved template will be right here. Once you've created the project you will see all your folders and assets in the project window. Even your custom sequences will be loaded up. That is amazing right? Now the next trick to edit extremely efficient is using custom shortcuts and I'm gonna give you a list with my favorite ones in a second. So if you want to add a cut on your clip you've got to hit Control plus K on your keyboard by default. This is just annoying because I I don't want to hit Ctrl plus K all the time. Now let me show you my secret. Go to the edit menu and click on keyboard shortcuts. Now in the search bar, type in add edit. There it is. Now select the current shortcut and remove it. Then click on the empty space and hit C on your keyboard. Then click on OK. Now you can use C on your keyboard to set cuts in your timeline. Now these are all the shortcuts I adjusted for myself and they are saving my life every single day. So grab a screenshot or something because it will speed up your workflow. Alright, there's something I can't forget to mention in
in this video and that is clearing your cache. Alright, when using Premiere, the program will pile up a lot of temporary files which will eventually slow down your PC. To remove these files, go to Edit and Find Preferences. Click on Media Cache. Now simply click on the Delete button and this will speed up Premiere and remove a ton of junk files you don't need anymore. Next, saving animation presets. As you probably know, I animate the scale of my video every now and then to zoom in on my face just like this. That way I can prevent an annoying jump cut. Now of course I'm not creating this animation every time I need it. I just created a preset and use it every time I need it. Alright, to do that yourself, all you need to do is right click the effect you want to save and then choose Save Preset. Call it Zoom or something. Now you can choose between three options. Scale means the animation will not be anchored to a specific point in time. When you choose this one, it will adjust the length of your animation depending on the length of your clip. So if your clip is longer, the animation will take longer to finish. If you choose Anchor to In Point, the start of the animation will be anchored to the in point or the beginning of your clip. This one will remember the length of the animation. Anchor to Out Point will do the exact same thing but at the end of the clip. Let's try the In Point for example. Then click on Save. Now this saved preset will be visible in your preset folder in the effects library. Simply drag it on your clip and there you go. You can do this with everything by the way, Lumetri, Transform, Gaussian Blur, whatever. Next I want to show you 20 amazing hidden features in the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay creative.